Joanne Banco from Let's Go Sew. If you're anything like me, you're always struggling in the sewing room to organize. That's one of my one of my struggles for sure. Um, finding your tools, having the tools where you need them, when you need them, um, can sometimes be a challenge when we've got fabric flying around and all kinds of fun stuff going on in the sewing space. So I thought it would be really fun to make a sewing machine mat. There you see it right there, the beautiful um, blue one. And it's got embroidered pockets on it, plus another big long pocket in the front. And it's perfect for storing all those little um, notions that you need to reach for when you're sewing. It's also a great, great, great thing to take with you while you travel. Maybe you have a smaller machine. I'm going to be working on my big machine here today, but you might have a smaller one that you're taking um, when you go to classes and retreats, camping, whatever. Um, that is the perfect way to roll up your tools, have your seam ripper, your needles, everything you need at hand. So let me tell you a little bit about the supplies you need. You're going to want to start with um, your base fabric. Now, what about size? That might be your first question. Size can be whatever you want it. You can see from the, the sample that I just made sure that I had a little bit of a margin behind my machine, a little bit of margin to the right and to the left. And then I think the pockets, it's good to um, maintain the size that, that I use, which is about five inches, because that way it's not hanging down too low when you're, when you're sitting at it. So that just makes sense. But again, base-wise, you can. Um, I'll give you some tips in the in the download, but you can measure your machine and then make it accordingly. So I've got my base fabric, and then I've got a pocket um, fabric for the big pocket. You could see, you'll see the embroidered ones in a minute, but um, if you don't have an embroidery machine, sure can do it another way. All you got to do is get another piece of fabric, and you could just make little patch pockets to go anywhere you want. Then you're going to need some binding strips, and you're going to need fusible interfacing. So I have fused the interfacing, or the fusible batting is really what we call this, to the wrong side of my top piece. And I'm going to show you um, how to quilt it today, too. But for now, we're going to head over to the machine. I've got my um, machine all set up for embroidery. And I want to show you how I designed this nifty pocket. So um, if you've got embroidery capability, you've got lots of different, lots of different uh, options. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I created the, the pocket design. I'm going to start with an oval. I'm going to start with a straight stitch. I'm going to go ahead and set that. I'm going to go into the edit mode. And I want to add quilting around that. So I've got the ability here to select what size hoop I want. I want to do it in a four by four. There's a plain old stipple pattern, but I've got some fancy patterns in this now too. So I'm going to touch select <clears throat> and it's going to bring up a, a menu there. And I want to mimic the diamond shape that I did the, the quilting with. So I'm going to select that diamond. I'm going to say, okay. And you can see it doesn't fill the area um, quite like I want it to, so that's no problem. I'm just going to shrink the size. And you're going to see here it is going to generate the stitches perfectly. OK, so what do I do next? I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to touch Add. And I want to add my lettering. So you can write whatever you want. I'm going to pick a font style that I like. And I'm going to program in the word pin. So I'm going to pick my capital P. I want to do a medium size, lowercase i, n, s, set. And let's take a preview of that. And you can see how neat that's going to be. So let's go ahead and get this started stitching. Put my hoop on the machine. And lower the presser foot. And oh, it wants me to touch embroidery. So we are good to go now. I got a green button. OK, so what's really cool about this is, again, it's going to mimic the, the quilting that I did on the, on the mat area. Um, it's going to give me that same kind of look. It's going to label my pockets. And it's going to be a really fun way to use your lettering and maybe frame shapes that you have built in and quilting patterns. Of course, you could do this with anything. You could do just lettering. Um, you could do plain pockets, too. So let's let, let that stitch for um, just a few minutes. So I want you to see the, the quilting pattern start to form there. And it's going to form right around that oval that's filling in. It's a fill stitch filling in that area with the, um, the quilt, and then the lettering would actually stitch last. So there it goes. It's going to move over, and it's waiting for a new color. So we're using the same color, lower the presser foot, and we're good to go again. And we'll let that stitch for just a, just a minute there. The total design takes about five minutes. 
um, stitches all of the areas right where it needs to go from edge to edge and then travels around. So it really does a really nice job of, of filling that in. Okay, can you see that? All those little diamonds are, are starting to form. Um, let me just talk about fabric for a minute while that's stitching. I just used a plain, ordinary cotton. Um, you want something just like a quilt weight cotton that's gonna be perfect uh, when you're done with the batting in the middle and just gives you just enough padding to sit on your machine and sit there nicely and, and not, be, not be too thick. But it'll help absorb a little bit of vibration and make your machine run a little bit quieter too. All right, let's go ahead and stop this. Okay, and I've got one already finished for you. So and there you go, you see it perfectly, perfectly sized. Um, I did it in the four by four hoop so it would fit my pocket area and we've got a nice, neat pocket finish. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, change over to sewing so I can show you how I finish this. Okay, so I've got my machine all set up for sewing and I've already ha gone ahead and done one more step and that is to line my pocket, so right sides together, so all the way around, and notice these little um, uh, ends here, the way I stitch it. When I sew anything that's gonna be turned right side out, instead of just starting at the seam line and stitching around, I start at the raw edge, stitch up to the seam line, and then start going around. When you do that and you trim and turn this um, inside, right side out, you're gonna find it a whole lot easier to fold those edges in where they belong to be closed. So the next step is I would go ahead, I reinforce my corners, I would clip each one of these corners, get rid of some of that bulk. And if you notice, I fused the uh, same batting to my pocket piece. That just gives a, a little bit more um, puff to it, and a little bit of, of body. So I'm gonna trim all this down, get rid of all that excess. Okay, and then I would turn that right side out, reach in there, and I'm going to use a, a very important tool here, this little point presser to poke out these little corners here. Okay, and again, you know, use, make as many pockets as you want. I just thought three little pockets would be good for storing pins, needles, little notions. So we get in there and we just poke all that out. We're gonna have a really nice, pretty little finished pocket. Okay, there you go. Like I said, look how nice and, and neat that is to turn that raw edge under. You're not gonna have to fuss a lot there with you know, where, where it should end up to match where you started stitching. All right, so now we're ready to do the quilting part on this. And I quilted that whole blue mat um, in the same diamond fashion. I did it with a special foot that I have attached to this machine. It's a, it's a dual feed foot and it's belt driven. And it actually plugs into the machine. It's digitally controlled so that I can control the, um, the feeding mechanism, make it go a little slower, a little faster. It also allows me to do some extra different stitches. So what in the world are all these gadgets here for? Well, these are quilt guides. So we can take this with an attachment and slide that right in, right in there. I slide that right in. And all I have to do then is start with the first line that I'm gonna use as my reference point. I really am fond of this diamond effect. So I just did a little, little cross mark and I'm gonna be able to stitch um, multiple rows. I also wanted to show you as an option though, the walking foot, because the walking foot would be something that would be available for a wide variety of machines. If you don't have this dual feed foot, go ahead and, and exchange it for the walking foot. You'll also find a hole on this foot and a guide is available for that as well. So you can essentially do the same thing. So we'll set that one aside. And I'm gonna start off with just a regular straight stitch. I'm gonna move that to a center needle position. And when I do quilting, I always lengthen my stitch at least three, maybe three and a half. Okay, and I, we're just gonna do that, that first row. I actually could turn on my little beam there and use the guideline and I could um, line that up if I wanted to. And I could use that to you know, see if I'm, I'm following that line. 
Okay, so we're gonna go down that one line. Go ahead and turn this off now so you can see this. Okay, and this is where the guide really comes into play. I'm gonna use that first reference line. I can slide this whatever distance I want. And each and every additional line that I stitch, all I have to do is watch my guide arm and my previous line of stitching. And I can go end to end. I can keep turning this around and go directionally from side to side across the whole entire, entire area. Okay, so we'll do one more row here. And then of course I would go in the other direction and do, do that. I'd be a little more straight, straight on the straight road too if I was paying a little more attention here, okay? But you can see how nice that is. Now, what about using some alternative stitches? Well, with this option, I can actually go into even the, um, decorative stitches that are in this machine. I could choose something like a, a feather stitch and I could do that maybe between the rows. So again, I could change that, that distance and do you know extra, extra stitching in between. Um, this foot gives me the ability to choose stitches that normally would not be available to be used with a walking foot because it's belt driven instead of using the teeth that feed it. So it allows me to do side, side to side stitches. It also protects me on this machine. Anywhere I see a stitch that is um, open for, for use, it's um, highlighted, it's not, it's not grayed out, it's highlighted on the screen, so. All right, so I've just done some really, really, really quick stitching there. And you get, the, you get the idea. Let me show you some of the other samples that I've done and you can see some of these, these pretty effects. So here again, I could use a decorative stitch for all of those rows, but I think it's kind of fun to mix it up and do straight stitches and then do some of these decorative rows in between. So let's go back over to the table and let me show you how I finish this up. I've got my, I would have my quilted layer. I'd have another piece that matches this that would be um, on the back side. I'm gonna put uh, wrong sides together. I'm gonna have a, a binding strip that's gonna match each side. I'm gonna bind those edges, sew in my pocket lines, and I've got a perfect sewing machine mat for home, for travel, for quilt retreats. Visit the website, you'll find complete instructions on how to make your own wonderful sewing machine mat. 